Drying aquifers are threatening the very survival of human civilization. I hear about this everywhere I travel all over the world. In cities and in farmlands, wells are drying up as water tables drop from overuse and changing rainfall patterns. But we know how to fix this. So in this video, I'm gonna lay out the basics of how to regenerate a drying aquifer so you can get started. Before we talk about fixing the aquifer, we need to cover some basic geology and hydrology to understand the situation beneath the ground. You need to realize that geology is extremely variable and there are a lot of anomalies out there. But in general, there are three main types of aquifers. And the first one is called a perched aquifer. A perched aquifer is caused by a layer of impermeable rock strata that's set higher up in the landscape than any other larger water table. The area above the perch is where the water comes from that feeds this aquifer. And a lot of times that water will surface on the ground in the form of a spring. Did you ever see a spring popping out in the middle of a hill? Probably from a perched aquifer. The next type of aquifer is called an unconfined aquifer. An unconfined aquifer is created by all of the water in a watershed that seeps into the ground and settles in the low areas. An unconfined aquifer is recharged by rain and snow and basically follows the topography of the land. So at the bottoms of valleys are where we usually find the unconfined aquifer close to the surface. An unconfined aquifer is connected to streams and rivers and wetlands in the valleys. The rivers are the part of the aquifer that shows itself above the ground. This is how over pumping of the unconfined aquifer can dry up rivers and streams. The third type of aquifer is called a confined aquifer. Confined aquifers have impermeable rock layers both above and below. So they're not recharged by the rain falling above them. If they're recharged at all, it's by land that's probably far away and not related to the surface topography. See, the water in confined aquifers was deposited there a long time ago and may have just been sitting inside the confinement of rock layers for hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands of years. Water that's been confined for a long time like this is called fossil water. I made a whole video about the largest area of fossil water on the planet in North Africa, where some of the same water has been sitting right there in the ground for a million years. These pockets can be pressurized and when a pressurized pocket is drilled into, the water just erupts out of the well without a pump. These are called artesian wells. One of the main differences between the perched and unconfined aquifers with the confined aquifer is that the perch and the unconfined aquifers are renewable, meaning that the water from the watershed soaks in and recharges that aquifer but a confined aquifer is non-renewable. Now, it may possibly be recharged by an area far away, but it's not recharged by the land above it. So if you're pulling your water from a confined aquifer, this video is not gonna help you very much. Where I lived in Prescott, Arizona, the entire water supply was pumped in from a confined aquifer filled with fossil water that had been deposited there during the Pleistocene era when it was a much wetter place. As the town grew and the water level dropped without any recharge, their solution was to build a pipeline to take water from an even farther away confined aquifer of ancient water. You can guess how that one's gonna play out in the long term. So as far as groundwater recharge, we're gonna focus on the perched and the unconfined aquifers. For these aquifers, work can be done within the catchment basin, which is the land above these aquifers to rebuild these water tables. In a degraded landscape with bare, naked soil, water falls on hills and valleys and quickly rushes through the drainage system without soaking in to feed the groundwater supply. If water in this watershed is not percolating into the ground, then when water is sucked out of the aquifer by wells, it's not being replenished. In a massive restoration project on the Los Plateau in China, they described how to dress that bare naked soil by putting on clothes. First, this means putting a hat on the tops of hills by planting trees. 
When hilltops are wearing a hat and covered with trees, there are a lot of positive effects for the hydrology as the forest canopy breaks the force of falling raindrops and creates a spongy, shady soil environment for increased percolation of water. I have an entire video on why hilltops should grow trees, so please watch How Trees Make Water. For a perched aquifer, the hilltop may comprise the entire catchment, so the effects of foresting the hilltop can mean a dramatic increase in water flowing from springs connected to that aquifer. The next item of clothing to dress the bare soil is a belt. This is the treatment for mid-slopes, some sort of structures or cultivation patterns that are placed perpendicular to the flow of water will create checks to slow and sink the flow as the water moves downslope. These could be terraces, rows of trees and shrubs, swales, the tillage pattern, perennial grasses, or any sort of treatment to the slope which spreads the water across the hill instead of flowing down. This interception will slow, spread, and sink water for increasing percolation by increasing the time and surface area contact between land and water. The longer the water lingers and the more ground it's spread over, the more time and space it has to soak in. Small ponds or terraces within the drainages can further sink in excess runoff. And then the waterways should be vegetated as much as possible so plant roots grow deep to aid with percolation and shade the waterways to keep the soil spongy. The final item of clothing to include are the shoes. The shoes are ponds placed at the bottoms of slopes to collect any excess runoff that makes its way past the hat and belt. The ponds can allow for further percolation and also can be sealed and used as irrigation water for downstream farmland. So do you see what we did? We slowed the flow of water throughout the total watershed by dressing the terrain so water will percolate into the ground and recharge the aquifer instead of rushing off downstream over bare naked ground. Recharging a depleted aquifer is as simple as changing the duration of time that it takes for water to move from the top to the bottom of the watershed and giving it opportunities to percolate instead of running off. In order to successfully recharge an aquifer, you need to control as much of the watershed as possible because the more widespread your treatment is over the total watershed, the more the cumulative effects that your work will have on the aquifer. Now, I've been showing sloped land, but the same theory goes for flatter areas as well as urban areas. Making places for water to soak in and percolate throughout the entire catchment that feeds the aquifer. That may mean small basins collecting road runoff or dry wells to get water into the ground in very dense urban areas. It's about intercepting water as close to where it falls as is possible and getting it down into the ground. It's really pretty basic because most aquifer depletion is a result of land degradation and urbanization. There's also the problem of over extraction where people are growing thirsty crops and building thirsty cities and pumping down the aquifer faster than it will have ever been capable of recharging. The solutions for that are based more in water conservation, growing appropriate crops, and regulating to prevent over extraction. The scale and complexity of some of these situations may seem large and overwhelming, but with large scale aquifer depletion, we just need larger scale watershed restoration. What are we waiting for?